Welcome back to the podcast. Make sure to hit that like button, share the videos, and subscribe. We're getting closer to the draft. And after this video, providing there's not any big news, I will start my draft talk. And what I want to do is go through each position in the draft and rank the top 10 at that respective position. So the first one we'll do is quarterback, and that'll be the next podcast I do after this. So in this podcast, initially, I was going to do the top five worst teams in the league. But as I went through each roster and looked at these teams, it became apparent to me that there's a lot of teams with a lot of issues. So what I'm going to do is go through 16 teams that I have major issues with, and I'm going to rank them in a category. There's three categories. Tier one is the least concerning. That means that the team has a glaring issue or two. The second tier is worse, and that's a pretty bad category. I'm going to name it that. And then the third is the worst category that you can be in, and that's horrifically bad. So let's get through this. I think this is going to be a good way to cap off the free agent talk where all these teams are at before the draft and just kind of cement how these off seasons have went for these teams. So you guys know we can get ready in September for those picks. I can't wait to put this point system back to the test and I've got it really ready to go with the, the money picks next season, man. I'm already itching to get back in the fold and using what we learned this year for next year. It's going to be great, but let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's put in the off season work first. So the New York Jets, I have them ranked in that second tier. Uh, they're not horrifically bad, but they're pretty bad. That's where I got them at that second tier. And it's because they actually have made a couple efforts to get better. So I don't have them as one of the worst teams in the league. It was nice to hear that they were at least in the running for Tyreek Hill. And they also tried to make an effort to get DK Metcalf. I respect that at least. Because heading into this offseason, one of the things that I thought the Jets needed to do the most was get a big-time receiver to come in and play for them. Because you got to think, when's the last time the Jets had a big-time playmaker like that at receiver? You probably have to go back to what? Keyshawn Johnson, Lavernius Cole, Santana Moss. you got to go back quite a ways. So I really think a receiver was Zach Wilson and Michael Carter coming up at running back. That could really put them on the map but they weren't able to accomplish that. And now it's looking like the draft is the only place they're going to be able to address it. And as we know, receivers take two, three years to develop coming out of college. So there's not an immediate fix for the Jets there, but they do need a star player to put them on the map. And they haven't gotten that yet. But the other issues that I have with the Jets and why they're pretty bad is the offensive line is put together by mostly average players. I know they made a couple moves and, made a couple improvements, but that's not a complete offensive line by any means. The receiver position is a big problem. They don't have a true number one, and I'm not even sure they have a true number two on that roster. Denzel Mims really hasn't developed yet, so that's an issue. At running back, I do like the promise of Michael Carter, but we still don't know if he's going to develop, so that's an issue. And then defensively, from top to bottom, outside of the defensive tackle position, the Jets are average to below average at every position. So that's why they're at pretty bad. This defense is still going to make them a laughing stock. And Zach Wilson, without enough support under pressure, it's going to be a problem. Next up, the Steelers. And I got them ranked pretty bad. There's a lot of issues going on with them. Perhaps the worst, quarterback. The fact that Trubisky might end up getting the start week one, that's really alarming to me. And I think it's just the fact that they got Dwayne Haskins, they Mason Rudolph. It kind of feels like, they've already made up their mind. They're not going to draft anybody. And this is the, the direction they're going in. That's scary to me because the O-line has issues. You don't really have a dominant number one receiver. And then defensively outside of TJ Watt pass rushing up front and Devin Bush at linebacker, you don't really have a solid defense. That's very deep either. If you get a team with a good offensive line that can block TJ Watt, this Steelers defense usually is in trouble. So all of those issues make them rank at pretty bad. And then quarterback obviously being the biggest glaring hole. And I'm really surprised they didn't have any interest in any of these quarterbacks, man. I mean, I think about the Sean Watson and the, the uh, yellow and gold. I think that would bring a new spice and a new winning attitude to the Steelers having somebody like that, that can make plays on his own, uh, excite the entire team. I don't really think they uh, tried 
to address any of it. So Steelers, I'm sorry. And he might end up being a lot worse than people think. Next, the Texans, they're horrifically bad. And they're horrifically bad because everything that they do is below average. I feel like they don't care. They know that nobody wants to go there. And they're willing to just waste money on average player after average player. I would rather splurge on star players and overpay for them to a point where they can't say no. At least try to make your team appealing. But outside of the offensive line for the Texans, I really don't see any other position group that's that appealing. The receivers are pathetic. They have no running back to speak of. Quarterback play is non-existent. And defensively, it's like pretty much like the Jets, except the uh, Texans are worse because they don't have any defensive tackles. That's how bad they are. Uh, they just put average player at each position and hope it's going to work out. And guess what? That doesn't, that doesn't boost morale because – the players already know they're not going anywhere before the season starts. Texans, you are horrifically bad. David Mills isn't going to save you. And I cannot believe that I actually had Texans fans telling me that David Mills is going to develop. Please, please. I didn't call him David too short where it counts Mills for a reason last season. Please. Next up, the Jaguars. And I got them at horrifically bad. They have made some efforts to get better. I do appreciate that uh, offensive line. I feel like they've gotten that right pretty much. But I didn't like the draft from a year ago, and I don't like what they got defensively. Defensively, they're in shambles. They have no star playmaker. They have nothing on the defensive side. So let's just start with that. That's going to sink them regardless of what happens. But offensively, I'm not a big fan of Trevor Lawrence. I don't think he's tough enough. Travis Etienne, is he even going to stay healthy? And quite frankly, I didn't even view him as a good running back coming out of college. I thought he was an all-around average running back that I ranked number five to six overall out of the backs coming out. I thought Michael Carter with the Jets, talent-wise, was better. And you also overpaid, and you have $100 million almost wrapped up in the next three years with – and unfortunately, they spent money on these guys, Christian Kirk and Zay Jones. I don't know how you do that. I don't know how you have almost $100 million, $96 million to be exact, but it's just the point. Like, that much money wrapped up in those two guys, what are they smoking? What are they doing? Uh, I mean, seriously, what the fuck? But, Jags, you're, pretty, you're horrifically bad because of that shit right there. There's some things about this team I like, but you still don't get it. Cardinals are up next, glaring issues here. And Kyler Murray had every right to be upset with this team, even though I'm sure they're promising him big bucks in the future and to take care of him. So he mummed his lips a little bit, but let's be realistic about the Cardinals. They are way worse off than they were heading into last season. And they got worse as the season went on last year. Outside of D hop, nothing at receiver offensive line put together with bubble gum and duct tape, no dominant running back. They, and obviously they believe in James Conner, and I don't believe he's going to be able to carry this team at running back at all. They need somebody in there that's a true number one back. And then defensively, you lose all your pieces like Chandler Jones. So defensive line, probably one of the worst in the league. And the secondary is definitely a top five worst secondary in the league. I'll give them the credit a little bit at the linebacker position. I think they got some things going there. They made some good draft picks the past couple seasons of that position. But there are so many issues with the Cardinals that, you know, they might even, I mean, we really think about it. I might even want to put them at the pretty bad category, but I don't want to go there because Kyler Murray can ball. And I do feel like they got a good coaching staff that can keep this team afloat. So I didn't want to go that far with it, but I got them ranked at tier one glaring issue, but I'm telling you guys, I mean, this is a team that could end up being at the bottom of the pack. Don't be surprised if that's the case. D hop gets hurt again. Kyler Murray running for his life with no run game and a defense that can get torched. They're on the bubble. And that's why I had to turn this podcast into, you know, the top 16 teams I had an issue with because of teams like the Cardinals that could literally fall flat on their face. Next Seahawks, horrifically bad. Where do you start? You know, outside of DK Metcalf, nothing physical at receiver. Uh, Dwayne Eskridge and Tyler Lockett are, speed guys but they really haven't stepped up so yeah outside of dk nothing 
the offensive line is obviously one of the worst units in the league. And then running back constant injuries, like with Chris Carson, always hurt Rashad Penny. You can't depend on, you never could depend on him. I mean, what, what effort have they made at running back over the past two, three years to really make an effort? I look, I love Chris Carson too. When he's healthy, he's amazing, but you know, you're not going to get that old Chris Carson where he had that year, you know, where he had over a thousand yards and, you know, got it in the end zone and made big plays. So uh, with the Seahawks offense, everything top to bottom, you know, now without Russell to keep this team afloat, it's going to be even more embarrassing. And then defensively, what do they got? I mean, they're literally hoping that Carlos Dunlap comes back on a cheap deal, but man, I'm, I'm honestly surprised other teams haven't paid Carlos Dunlap on a multi-year deal. I don't really know what's up with that. Maybe he's up in the air about not wanting to uproot his family from Seattle. That's possible, but man, I got to believe that offers are out there. And if you're a good pass rusher, like he is, why would you want to go back to Seattle? But either way, D lines and shambles linebacking cores and shambles secondary for the most part is in shambles, not deep, not a good safety group. So Seahawks, you're horrifically bad uh, with Russell. You weren't that good last year. Even he couldn't keep this team respectable. I'm afraid for what the Seahawks are going to be going through going forward. And I know they got a lot of draft picks, but I'm going to say it again. I'm not so sure that they have what it takes to build a team. We haven't seen it. If they couldn't build a team with Russell and DK Metcalf, like if if you can't even set a foundation for that, how are they supposed to set a foundation now with all these draft picks? I mean, it just seems like it's going to be more waste. And now you don't have a quarterback. Next up, the Atlanta Falcons, horrifically bad. Marcus Mariota coming in to play quarterback. That ain't going to work, guys. He might have a spark or two. He might lead this team to four victories or five if he's lucky. But that's about what you're going to get at best. Kelvin Ridley, mental issues, gambling, and making stupid choices when you don't even need to. You got all that talent and you waste it. I got no pity for you, man, because there are people with far worse that are going on that live a more productive life. So Falcons, you got nothing at receiver. Um, Kyle Pitts, I love you. You're going to be carrying this team all on your own. O-line, you got two or three pieces up there that are pretty good, uh, including, you know, you got the uh, right side, and then you got that tackle position by, with Matthews. It's not bad, but they still haven't put together the remaining two pieces, which is another guard and another center, just to kind of make it complete. But they've had three years to do it, decided not to decided not to bring in a running back when you really need one. When you go back two or three seasons, when you had Matt Ryan and Julio Jones and Kelvin Ridley, the old line was young and at least decent, but you didn't even bother to even try to sniff around for a running back to help out Matt Ryan. I'm not sure why that was the choice for the Falcons, but well, you know, you make your bed, you sleep in it. Sorry, Arthur Blank. I don't know why they don't hire somebody like me on the podcast. I'm not trying to toot my own horn but I believe the regime that we got here with my subscribers and myself could do a better job than what they got going on right now which is absolutely horrific and that's why again they're in that category defensive line may be one of the worst in the NFL and the secondary may be one of the worst in the NFL that's where we're at with the Falcons and this is how this is how you know the Falcons are terrible ask yourself this question Who are the Atlanta Falcons? I have no idea. They have no identity. They have no existence. Therefore, they are one of the bottom five teams in the NFL. And just so we're clear, uh, I might as well tell you guys as I go along the, the teams I think are the bottom five, just so you know, the Jets are one of them. The Texans are one of them. The Jaguars are one of them. And the Falcons are one of them. And I'll make that clear because there are like teams that I think are like going to be in the bottom five, like rank wise, like overall wins. Those are the teams that I think will be there. But let's continue on now to the Saints. I got them with glaring issues. Offensive line is a big problem now without Armstead at left tackle. So there's a big hole that needs to be filled there. And they still haven't completed the offensive line anyway. So O-line an issue and receiver outside of Michael Thomas is an issue defensively. They got defensive line issues, especially at the DT position. They got depth issues at linebacker and they got depth issues in the secondary. 
And I would say uh, the secondary is probably the least thing I'm concerned about, but I still think they could use another corner in there. Uh, but that aside, those are four or five thing issues that I have with the Saints. And the main storyline with that guy is, you know, even though I got him ranked at a tier one, I still think that we're never going to be able to see Jameis Winston with a good support system. I don't think it's going to happen quite yet. I mean, if, you know, maybe if they had the offensive line figured out and all they needed was a couple more receivers, I could get behind that because you do have Kamara and he's an animal. Uh, but just the fact that the, they have to fix the O-line and the receiver position, I don't think they're going to get it done all in one year. So we actually might have to wait till Winston's second year of his contract to be able to actually finally see what we've been waiting for. I'm not saying that Jameis Winston is going to be Peyton Manning or anything like that. But I do think he can be good enough to get this team to a playoffs and push him deep if he's got that support. But I don't think we're going to see it for a little while. Next up, the Panthers, they got glaring issues. Offensive line, I think they could have made better plays. I, I like it. it. They put it together. It's a decent offensive line, but I still would have liked for them to go out there and get one or two dominant guards, two dominant pieces that could just really help out McCaffrey if that's the direction they're going in. But it kind of just feels like a middle of the pack offensive line. You don't have to worry about it, but it's not going to be that great either. But if McCaffrey can stay healthy and the receivers they got, I like the weapons, but the quarterback position is something that you can't neglect and why they're on this list. Sam Darnold, PJ Walker, they're not going to get it done. Maybe they address this in the draft. We know that they've been looking at quarterbacks and talking with some of the quarterbacks coming out this year. So I'm glad they made an effort. That's why they're not further down my tier list. Uh, but when you got whole at quarterback, that's the worst that you could have. You, if you don't have a quarterback, you're not going to be competing regardless. Like I said, maybe, maybe with a healthy McCaffrey and these receivers, if they can get some play action going, Sam Darnold could bring this team to eight or nine wins in a low wild card spot. Maybe, but that's best case scenario because of that. And then we got to flip back over to the defense and the secondary still has issues because, you know, no longer do they have Stefan Gilmore. He's vying where he's going to go. Uh, AJ Boye, it didn't really seem to work out. So they still have uh, issues at corner. They got to go out there and address that. And I think they still have depth issues in the front seven. So the Panthers are a team where I feel like they're pushing forward a little bit. And I talk about them in that light, but, Certain things are holding them back right now, like we mentioned, and we'll see if they can correct that. You know, we'll see what they do in the draft. The quarterback is the number one thing I would like to see them take care of. Next up, the Bears, and to talk about the worst five teams, I already told you four. The Bears are, to me, the worst team in the National Football League right now. I initially thought the Houston Texans, but that was before the Bears just completely shit all over this offseason, like it didn't even exist. Justin Fields, I liked his talent coming out of college, but I've, I'm not sure we're ever going to be able to see that because the Bears are so bad at so many positions. David Montgomery is the only legit piece they have offensively. The offensive line is probably one of the worst in the league. I would say bottom three easily. Receiver position is probably the worst of any team in the National Football League. So again, you get back to having a young quarterback in Justin Fields, good luck developing because I don't see it happening. It's going to be a tough road. And then defensively, they've completely fallen apart. Uh, linebacking core is probably their strongest position at this point, but D line non-existent, uh, no more Khalil Mack, secondary multiple issues. The Bears to me are the worst team in football. Next up, the Lions, they got glaring issues. Um, I'm going to rank them at that tier one spot. They've actually made an effort to get better. And the offense, I'm actually optimistic about. They addressed the receiver position uh, by getting DJ Chark. I respect that. They have put together a decent offensive line. They got a developmental number one running back in what I think. Um, and I'm going to verify something, too, with the Detroit Lions real quick, because I want to make sure I got this right. Um, with their backup spot at the running back position. Just want to make sure. So yeah, DeAndre Swift, that's, I think he can develop into a true number one running back. You know, this is going to be his third year in the league. I really respect him, but 
Jamal Williams is that backup. I like that. And Jamar Jefferson, too. Uh, seventh round pick from a couple of years ago. Um, I really think he could end up being good as well. So with Jared Goff at quarterback, if he's not going to be under pressure and he's going to have that play action with Hawkinson and DJ Chark, are these guys going out? Reynolds at, at wide receiver too. I think they could make it work. I really think this offense could end up being pretty damn good. I'm surprised I'm saying that when we go back, you know, I, I didn't think much of this team a year or so ago. But players have developed. Panay Sewell developed, and he ended up being good. I wasn't expecting that. Amon Ross St. Brown was making plays when teams knew he was really the only like, top dog at receiver for this team. They got a lot going for him. They really do. Frank Ragnow, Jonah Jackson, Taylor Decker on the O-line, and they're young. This is good. This offense could control games and be very efficient. And defensively, why I had to put them on this list was because the secondary still has major issues. And we don't know if Jeff Akuda can stay healthy all the time. And outside of him, really, what do they have back there? And the front seven, I still think they need to bring in better pass rushers. I like Aquara and I like the defensive tackle pairing that they got with McNeil and Onwu Zurike, but they don't have enough. The front seven is still very depleted, very weak. So those, re that, those are the reasons why I have them on this list, but they are pointing in the upward direction. And again, I'm shocked to say it, but they are. Washington up next, they're horrifically bad. They're so bad that they don't even know they're bad. They go out there and get Carson Wentz. They're literally two days behind their own ass. That, because we already saw Carson Wentz fail with the Indianapolis Colts, who had one of the best offensive lines in the league and one of the best run games. So he's so you're telling me Carson Wentz, who's damaged goods, who's afraid behind a good offensive line, is going to come into a situation with a bad offensive line, one of the worst in the league, by the way, without a lot to throw to outside of Terry McLaurin and a average at Gibson at running back. So good luck, Washington. This offense is going to be horrific. Uh, you might as well. I don't know why they're not just starting Heineke and building around him. He's better than Wentz uh, at this point. So I'm not sure what they're doing. And defensively, outside of their defensive line that has injury issues, they don't really have much defensively either. They got some good, decent pieces at the corner position, but that's it. So the Washington team doesn't know how to build. Nobody wants to come here. It's bad. And, of course, we got to talk about the other teams in the NFC East, too, because they got issues as well. Philly, you're horrifically bad. Nobody wants to come here. And year after year, you just don't do enough to build up your team offensive line isn't what it used to be you got injury issues at running back with Sanders you got Jalen Hurts at quarterback and we're not even so sure he can develop yet at receiver outside of Devonta Smith you really have nothing Jalen Rieger hasn't developed defensively your D-line has been aging and you don't have depth. linebacker core no star player secondary put together with a little bit of bubble gum and duct tape really no top dog. The Eagles are one of those teams that are going to be lucky if they get to six wins and they're going to stay there until they really change around the way they build a team through the draft and free agency. Giants, basically the same thing. You're horrifically bad. We don't know if Daniel Jones can stay healthy. Saquon, I can't remember the last time he was healthy. You have a terrible, terrible offensive line. And that receiver, you got pretty much nothing. Galladay, yeah, I guess in heart, he could be a true number one receiver, but he's never healthy. And Sterling Shepard is never healthy either and really never developed. So what are you really selling me here? And without Ingram, they don't have really anything at tight end anymore either. And he had injury issues. Defensively, the Giants aren't very scary either. They don't have a complete defensive line. Linebacking core, they don't have a stud. And the secondary... They don't really have much either. Uh, they're not very deep at corner, not very deep at safety. So Giants, to me, are one of the worst teams in the league. Daniel Jones, if he's healthy, he'll try to carry them and keep them somewhat respectable because I do like Daniel Jones still outside of his injury concerns. But that's all they got going for him. And we're going to cap it off with two teams that have glaring issues. Not horrifically bad. You know, I don't have anything terribly bad to say about these teams, but this needs to be addressed. So with the Cowboys, their O-line, I got them ranked at the glaring issue spot, and their O-line is no longer what it used to be. So the offensive line is an issue. 
And two things that they're not willing to correct are an issue and they're stuck with it for the next year, at least regardless. Dak Prescott is always going to hold this team back. So I'm done explaining myself. I think he's afraid to get hit. I feel like he doesn't have that fire, that killer instinct. I think he's got some skill sets that make him good, but he doesn't have that kill mentality. And you got Mike McCarthy that's just a fucking idiot, a fucking retard. That Mike McCarthy, man, how does he get a job? How does he get a job? I want to know. I think the best Madden player in the world could call better plays than he could. That's where we're at. It is. I, I don't even know how Jerry Jones allows this to happen. Wouldn't you want a head coach that you want to emulate and respect? If somebody were to emulate Mike McCarthy, it's how to let yourself go, eat 8,000 donuts, and lose NFL games on Sunday. That ain't what I'm about. I want to win. Those, that shit is going to hold this team back big time. Defensive line, major issues. And there you go. Cowboys got multiple things going on. And it just, and actually last season, the Cowboys should have went very far, but they didn't because of Mike McCarthy and Dak Prescott. And we'll cap it off with the Green Bay Packers. Yeah, I mean, I had to put them on this list, guys, because... It makes no sense what they're doing. At this point, I respect their defense. Like I actually have nothing bad to say about the defensive side of the football. But that doesn't really matter at the end of the day when the offense just keeps getting worse. This whole offseason, the two things that they needed to do, well, I mean, I guess if you want to count the other thing they needed to do, which was make sure Rodgers stayed, I guess that's one thing. And they did. I mean, they overpaid him a crazy amount. But they have one of the worst offensive lines in the league. And one of the worst receiving groups in the league, as of right now, it's definitely bottom three. And they did absolutely nothing to address that. Nothing at all. So for that reason, I'm putting in there on this list with glaring issues. Because even if you have a good quarterback and a good run game, it doesn't matter if defensive lines are blowing through every single play. And that's what's going to happen to the Packers this season even more so because they don't have anything legit to throw the football down the field to. So teams are just going to be able to stack the box. And on top of that, they're going to go into this draft and try to replace a couple of receivers. And I do respect the fact that they know that it's an issue, but we know that it takes two or three years for receivers coming out of college to develop. And there's no guarantee you're going to get a Jamar chase or a Jalen Waddle in round one. There's no guarantee for that. I mean, look at Tyreek Hill, as great as he is, and the Packers should have pursued him. It took him until his third year in the league to really become a complete receiver. And I remember his development. It was something beautiful to watch. His first year, he was like a, he was a return man, very speedy on offense. His second year, we saw a little bit more route development. And then the third year, he exploded to a point where he can make catches all over the field. And he wasn't in, he became fearless going over the middle of the seams and everything. The Packers don't have that. They had a really good receiver in Devontae Adams. You keep that, you cut the rest of those guys like Lazard and Scantling and whatnot. And then you try to bring in another piece or two to surround him and you make it overwhelming. So Rodgers can make work and possibly get you to a Super Bowl. The Packers decided not to do that. So even if they do find a couple decent receivers, it's still going to take a couple of years at least for them to develop. And how much longer do they have here with this project with Rogers? How much longer is this really going to go on? And they still have offensive line things they have to address. So to me, the Packers had a lot of opportunities over the last 10 years and they pretty much just wasted all of them. So, and when they had the blueprint, when they saw what brought them to a Super Bowl, when they had, I believe it was what Javon Walker, um, Donald Driver, you know, they had like, they had like two, three really dominant pieces that Rodgers could just keep slinging it to that were fearless at catching the football. That was the success for this team. That's what it took for them to get to a Super Bowl. And they know this and they don't want to do it. So that's whatever guys. I mean, that, I can't argue any more about that. It's probably, I'll mention it during the draft. We'll see what they do. Maybe they pull off a trade in the draft and surprise us all, but for the time being, they still have a lot of issues to address in that regard. So make sure to hit the like button, share the videos, and subscribe. Again, providing there's not any big news, 
I am going to start talking about the draft. And the next video that I do will be ranking the quarterbacks coming out this year. So again, guys, thank you for the support. Everything's been going good on this end. Uh, and I couldn't ask for more right now. Uh, a lot of good support from everybody. Thank you.